behind it. <laughs> and for the people who are listening to the recorded version of this, just just go back to the live version and just see what we said for the last five minutes. Yep. Um, so I've just seen something on a, on one of the Facebook groups, and I think that that's a troll job. And what a guy said, um, oh, I just got these, but I can't get the coffee to come through at a normal speed. It's too fast. What grinder should I get to it? And uh, he was sounding like he had no idea, absolutely no idea about coffee making. And uh, the coffee machine that he just got was a uh, La Marzocco Linea Mini. Now, that means that someone's just spent about what three and a half thousand pounds on yeah, a coffee three machine? Three and a half thousand pounds. I'm just wondering without his details because he might get bored and want to get rid of it. I'll no, actually, I want him as, as my best friend because he clearly has more money than sense. Anyway, or, or not, because everything's relative. Now, if if you had a million bucks in the bank, if I had a million bucks in the in the bank, I wouldn't buy a Ferrari to learn to drive, would I? You wouldn't, but I probably would. Yes, and then you're going to what? Come well, on. I'm going to either get bored of it or crash it or or put it into reverse at seventy miles an hour or something like that. Precisely. So, yeah. should you actually spend all of? Um, I mean thousands in a, a coffee machine to start with no you shouldn't no. and then you have you say okay i have a 350 pounds budget 500 dollars budget to start mm-hmm. what do i buy yeah and that's what the show is about today so yeah. not very much well no the, <laughs> not very much is the answer <laughs> no. well, actually i mean it depends so if you go out and here's the thing you're going to have to buy second hand at least yeah. the machine, right? Yes. You're and have actually, to... that's a sensible thing to do. It is. Because you buy it at a certain price, and if you're a little savvy, because you have to, to scope a little around, and uh, you don't buy the cheapest, you, know, you don't buy the most expensive. You buy in the mean, so in the average, and uh, you buy it at that price, and you will resell it at the same price. So it, technically, it didn't cost you much. Yeah, it's a very low, low bar entry. But also, I think, you know, you'll, you will get obviously more for your money at, um, at uh, if you're looking at the second-hand market, it does limit you on choices. Yes. Um, but you're limited at that price. And I, I just, nevertheless, I think it's not so important at this point, at this price point, at this stage of your journey where you're starting out, mm-hmm. you know, really getting hung up on the sort of nuances and features of different machines. That's not going to be where you're going to get stuck. So, so should we should we dive in and start? Because you and I took yeah. very different approaches. I mean, similar in some way, but different in in, in many. Yeah, ways. actually, I, I, I've seen a, I, I've seen a, a connecting uh, a connecting line between uh, both of our choices, and I think it makes a lot of sense. There are two main things. First of all, I would I would want first of all to define what is the bare bone minimum that you need to start. So. The coffee machine, first of all, obviously. A grinder, a grinder that is good enough to make espresso, mm-hmm. and a tamper. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. Tamper, you can really get away with the plasticky one that you get from the coffee machines. They are terrible, but they are tampers. So it's not the end of the world, technically. But you can always spend about 20 pounds on a tamper. That's more or less what you should be looking for. There are tampers that cost thousands of monies uh, and they, they, you know, spring loaded, preloaded. So you get the same even pressure. That's bullshit. It's Completely unnecessary. Polite. It's not that it's what, it's, what no, it is. It's, sort of, it's bull. It, well, it is kind of bullshit, but it, um, you people need... thought for a long time, people thought for the science sort of bored out for a long time that, that it, that it actually made a big difference. And so yeah, this it... market was built around it, but now they kind of looked at it and thought actually distribution, even distribution, um, yeah. and, and, and consistency is more important than, yeah. You know how how uh, how heavy tamping you it very very hard. You can you can sit on it or tamping it lightly is exactly. It makes the same. very little difference. The coffee is going to come out at the same speed. There's yeah. no way you can actually compact a coffee pack so much that the coffee doesn't go through if it's ground properly. It's more about keeping uh, keeping it level, right? It's about leveling it. Yeah. But then a leveling tool will do that just as well. Exactly. And there are actually uh, leveling tools that double as uh, leveling tool and. Um, um tamper but anyway yeah. so you need a tamper you do need that 
uh, you need a grinder and uh, you probably want a grinder that uh, is manual because you're going to learn something you want to learn something is the cheapest option as what well what do you mean by manual you mean a hand grinder hand grinder yes mm-hmm. uh, and that's because it's the cheapest option there are some decent ones there is uh, the the time more chestnut i think it's uh, no that's about 200 pounds already no it's not it's not, not? Uh, no, not the C2, no. Okay. But you, you, you're kind of, you're kind of like, being a bit naughty and stealing my, my shopping list. I Let's... think that actually that's the only one that can go down to espresso. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at that price point, yeah. Yeah, because if you have 300, 350 pounds, you don't really have a choice for a grinder because the grinder will basically eat up all of your budget. Uh, uh, or will you? I'm going to, you haven't yet come, come to my choices. Let's is, kick it off because we're, we're teasing, we're teasing yeah. people. Let's kick off and actually start and, and, and get to the meat of it. And so right away, we're going to get to the meat of it. But first, but first, <laughs> <laughs> I just like to say, don't forget, we're giving away a peak water filter. So uh, here's a great way. Oh, what a segue. I should have done this. I should have done this as a segue. A great way. To get ahead of your budget is get stuff for free. And actually, I've just thought this is actually a great way because you know what? There are a lot of people I've noticed that are giving stuff away for free in competitions. Mm-hmm. So enter all the competitions. You're bound to win something, you know. Eventually. Eventually. Uh, and that can get you started. But, um, but uh, we normally give away a, a kilo of beans each month. This month, we're giving away the peak water filter, which is right here. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do, Max? Just because we're talking gonna about this right now, I'm going to throw in. Uh, I'm going to throw in a whole kit. I feel like one of those. I'm going to be like one of those wow. used secondhand car salesmen. Not only do you get the peak water filter. <laughs> by the way, no purchase necessary for this. This where this is a new water filter. We're giving it away just because um, I've actually got these things as as as, uh, as as sort of gifts that we instead of beans because I wanted to change things up a little bit. We give away something each month just to keep people happy. Um, I've also got, um, I haven't I've opened this, bought this from Amazon. Mm. One of these, this is exactly the same one as I use, a uh, coffee distribution tool. Mm-hmm. It's a no name, no, it's nothing special, but you know, anything special. Yeah. And a Motta Tamp, a Motta Tamper uh, here. We will be including this in there as well. So I'll package this all up and send them off. And you don't have to spend any money, you don't have to do anything. You just go over to our site. There'll be a link down below. One of these sort of solid, heavy. Aluminium. Oh, that's really good, actually. Yeah, they are actually pretty good. Uh, I've got rid of all my other tampers. I just use a solid one that came with Rocket. Um, I really like those now. So, in order to win that, you just enter um, your email address, and that's it. That's all you need to do. You'll be included in all future giveaways, and we don't spam you. Uh, we don't share your information with anybody either. So, that's worth a go. That's one way to get started. Um, uh so where did i start why did we set the price point at that level i actually said at that level because it then precluded us from buying pretty much anything new yeah in I terms of espresso at prices machines. and everything starts at 400 ish but, but you know what it's so easy to say look you know what would you buy for a thousand pounds get started right okay now i've got lots of choices but let's mm-hmm. say you're not really ready to throw in a grand and if you kind of don't like what you're doing, you want to get most of your money back, what mm-hmm. are your choices then? And, and what's your price point going to be? 350 quid. I mean, to put that in perspective, 350 quid is going to get, what kind of car would you get for 350 quid? Kind of what? Car would you get? Car. Yeah. I was going to say uh, like the one like the trotters, that little three wheel, but actually those are quite expensive now. No, those are expensive. Uh, you, you, you probably do you're probably going to get a car that uh, someone's been murdered in it. You would get a total jalopy that would cost you more than 350 quid to get it on the road. I mean, there's yeah. not much you can buy these days of value for 350 quid, but you can actually get a really, I think, pretty decent start in espresso for that 500 bucks. And here's yeah. how you're going to do it. So I'm going to start off with the espresso machine that mm-hmm. I would choose. And I'll tell you why I'm going to choose it. You're not going to like it. No, I'm not going to like it. You're not going to like this at all. I would go with a Sage Barista Express. Ugh. And and I'll <gasps> tell you, and there's, I know, and Max is going <laughs> different colors. Maybe I can share my screen. Here's one. 
that I got on uh, Facebook Marketplace. I actually find Facebook Marketplace oftentimes to be a better place to go than eBay. Uh, eBay for coffee machines, I don't know. They tend to be marketed a little bit at the maybe less savvy or I don't know. People seem to put their prices a little bit higher for some reason. Yeah. I'm not well, sure because why. you have to pay the fees of, um, um, of eBay and you have to... You have to include the shipping. It, it's. I'm not really sure why, but anyway, so yeah. he, this is a machine that has hardly been used. Uh, you can take a look at it. It's in really great condition. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the gr it's got everything built in. It's got a steamer. It's got the grinder, and it's obviously mm -hmm. got the espresso function. The Barista Express is really well known. Uh, water tank yep. at the back. Um, it's a relatively small item, easy to ship. He's even throwing in there some Kafiza, which I was going to try to. Um, I'm going to try and spec out separately, but that's thrown in as well. So you're basically getting here a complete kit for 250 pounds. Yeah. Now, I, I actually want to add some things to this. The risk and, of, there is a risk on it, though. You don't know what, is, what it looks like inside. Well, um, hopefully the fact that he's got Kafiza um, shows that this guy, and he hasn't used it that much, he says, which I can believe looking at it. But you're right. Those are the sorts of things to look for. Yeah, because you can actually. I mean, I have I have had coffee machines in my hands and opened them. People saying, "Oh, I've descaled it very often," and then you realize that they think that descaling it is using kafiza. Yeah, I think it look. It's fair to say that but, there is no such thing as a total free lunch. And if you're going to go for a secondhand machine of any kind, um, then you're going to risk there's going to be something wrong with it. So obviously caveat emptor and you know look carefully like the history of the individuals etc um this mm -hmm. this chap here wants it to be collected um in person so you have a chance to make a coffee to look at it before you buy it which i'd always recommend in any case um and, but i think this is a great place to start and yeah. i'm not going to go on about the rest of my choices but this will um this will give you what you need uh, actually, even if you didn't do anything else, this would give you a, a starting point. But there's yeah, more that I want can to. you can actually, because there's a tamper in there already included. So you don't need yeah. a tamper in that one. And the tamper comes yeah. off. Yeah, it's kind of a self-started kit. It's not a bad way to get started. Um, yeah. New, I'm not sure how much they are new, but they're, they're quite a bit more than that. I think they're... Four something, I think. Three something. ish pounds. Yeah. So right in, you're 250 quid. You're kind of getting a ready to get started kit. You just need to look and keep your eyes open. Yeah. Back so to you, what would be your start? So for me, I'm actually going to go so for something very similar, but they are more rare than unicorn tears. Um, I would actually go for a second-hand Gadja Pyros. is the one I have, and it's, you know, it's an extremely capable machine. It's basically a Gadja Classic, but they've put a, a grinder with it. So again, it's a compact grinder and coffee machine at the same time so you don't need a grinder and that's a very capable grinder is actually um um conical burr like the the sage mm -hmm. i think it's a bit faster it's a very messy grinder but it will actually get you where you need to be and it does very good espresso okay it's very it's capable of grinding very good for espresso i've actually tried uh, a sage um that particular model and I think that he struggles to make espresso with normal porta filters. If you use the pressurized porta filters, it's okay. Can I just say you, what, what you that there's a um, there's a tip with those. Yeah, you need to re zero the, the grinder. So you know, you need you to have fast. to re zero the grinder, and and it's not that hard to do. But most people don't do that. Don't it's not. But it. remember, we're talking of people that is going to be their first coffee machine, the first the, the entry level. So that is something that would put me off. However, yeah, it, it's provided with a, a pressurized porta filter, which makes a difference. The Paros can do the same. I think it's uh, it's also can be used with a pressurized porta filter. It's a good start. But if you're using actually a pressurized porta filter, you don't need the Paros. You can actually get a much cheaper uh, Gaja Evolution or uh, a Gaja um, Espresso, and those are, those come for about 150 pounds. I don't think we want to use pressurized porta filters. I think this huh? is kind of against against the point of of the exercise. People want to be grinding fresh beans and making espresso. 
yes, you can grind fresh beans and make espresso with a, with a pressurized porta filter. You can Why do that. Why would you want to do that? Well, because you have a coffee machine that is set at 15 bars. Oh, because of the, the pressure setting on them. Right, right. But if you don't blow all your budget on the coffee machine, then you can spend some money. Say, for example, you get a second-hand coffee machine, mm -hmm. like a Gaja Classic or a Gaja Paros. If it hasn't been modified yet, you have to, you have to modify the, uh, the overpressure bulb. And that is something that you can get someone to do, you can, or you can do it yourself. It's up to you. It's but actually very easy to do. I've done that, but, but the it thing is, is very I, easy. I want to stay away from doing that because again, uh, this is the guy's first introduction. So somebody or girl's first introduction into, Hey, I'd like to, and I'm thinking of my sister here. My sister asked me this question, except mm -hmm. she was incredibly difficult. She's like, but I don't want anything that's plastic. I was like, come on, because you want, you know, save the planet. And um, I was like, well, okay, you, you want to spend, you know, 300 quid, but you don't want any plastic. That's going to be tricky. Um, actually, you ended up pushing her towards one of those uh, sort of glass type, Chemex type things. Actually, she's quite happy with. Oh, yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. But if you're going to get a coffee machine, you want espresso coffee particularly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I think the, the objective has to be that they're not going to have to pull the machine apart from their first day to start putting in different exactly. valves and, and tubes. Exactly. So for, for me, a pressurized porta filter wouldn't be uh, a crime. Actually, it's, it's going to extract very good coffee. It's going to make very good coffee. It's going to be a weird, frothy coffee. It's not going to be a proper crema. It's not going to be really good coffee, but it's going to be, it but you know be. what, it's going to be, it, it, it's going to be okay. I have to say, Remember, when we go back, we should have one of those little remember and we sort of go back in the mist thing, our special effects, if I can be bothered mm -hmm. at it. Uh, a number of episodes ago, and I had that coffee company in Belgium send me a bunch of, of coffees to try. Mm -hmm. And they gave me flavored coffee. It was a pre-ground flavored coffee because yeah. it was super big in the Russian market. And they're like, hey, try this because this is we're doing a lot of this business in, in Russia. And I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with creme brulee favored, you know? And you said, put it in the pressurized porter filter. Mm -hmm. I had, I think, six espresso machines at the time. And you <laughs> said, pick one of those sages that you've got. I think I used the Sage Bambino Plus. Put it in the pressurized porter filter there. And you were absolutely right. Made pretty good coffee. You but can possible. You can make actually quite, uh, quite good coffee. The pressurized porter filter will help you. It will be your friend. And it will get you towards the espresso. Then once you get good at that, because there, there is other, other variables you have to learn, tamping, tamping properly, making it even. Uh, for us now that we've been doing it for a long time, it's something that comes second nature. It's, uh, it's very easy. Yeah, I'm going to go there and you know, don't even think about it. Mm. But the first time you do it, it's awkward. Mm. Do I let, is it level? Am I going to stress over it? How much should I put? How much should I grind? Way in, way out. So that Gagia, that Gagia um, Paros that you're talking about, yes. that comes with, it, it's set up with 15 bars of pressure? Yes. All okay. of the Gagias that you buy off the shelf, new, they all come out with 15 bar. Don't know why. However, the Paros is an old version of the classic. So it actually has an overpressure valve that you can adjust. So you, you can actually modify that, but you need then to buy a gauge. You need to, to determine what is your pressure. It's a bit of a faff. There mm. are people that do that. There are kits available that you can buy already set up. It wouldn't be for that particular machine because it's for the Gadget Classic Pro and it wouldn't fit in the one in the Paros because it's a older model from mm. the 2000, I think. So but okay, so, old machine. so you, you'd get the Paros with a pressurized porter filter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and its and, own grinder. And it's got its own grinder, so you're set up and ready to go. How much do those cost if you can find them? If you can find them, you can, you can you find them on, on a range between 120 ish to 150. It's, it's not it's a very good expensive. price. It's very, very cheap. Price. You got a lot of money left over to buy coffee. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it actually has its own uh, tamper, crappy tamper. 
in the in the machine. It, it's not something that comes off. You just it's just one of those that you press against. But yeah. it's okay. Yeah. It is okay. Well, um, let me jump back in and talk about my next thing. So I've, I've now blown 250 pounds. I've got 100 mm -hmm. pounds left of my budget. Uh, here's what I would buy next. I would go and uh, I would buy the, since we're talking about tampers, uh, I found this tamper, which is a, uh, now remember, because we're using a Sage machine, which is a Breville in the US, yep. that they have those 53, is it 53 or 54? 54. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you can get this in 53 or 54 mil. Um, you want to get it right up as close as possible. You don't want to be leaving gaps. You don't want to be using a 53 mil tamper in a 54 mil basket because you'll leave a small gap around the side mm -hmm. where water will run. So get the right size, but you can get them in different sizes. And this Rhino one, it's down to, it's down to, to 19 pounds and 99p. Um, now, as you pointed out, my uh, my Sage Barista Express comes with the tamper, and it's I've actually a, a pretty good tamper. That one, and it feels good in the hand. It does. It's, it's not Which very one? awkward. The Sage the one. one in, the, in the Sage in the in the barista. Awful. What are you talking about? You, it's you were plasticky, taking drugs. You but, were taking uh, drugs at the time. Oh, it's plasticky, but it's now it's I okay. know that you are seriously whacked out on drugs half the time, Max, because that is an awful tamper. What are you? I, it's terrible. How? How is a good tamper good? Well, okay. So first of all, it has to fit perfectly, right? So it has to fit. And, and, it, and it does fit. So it kind of, you can do the job with it. But here's the mm -hmm. thing for me. You know that for me, and I think for a lot of people doing this, they're going to want to enjoy the experience. And picking up that little piece of plastic, which weighs about the same as a paper clip, yeah. and trying to tamp with a paper clip weight thing, there's just no, it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't, it's not nice. It's like, it's like taking a shower, getting out and then drying yourself with the cheapest wet towel, right? True. Yes. As long both, as it gets you dry. will get the job done. Mm -hmm. But one, imagine that you now got a 1000 thread Egyptian cotton, you know, how pampered and warm and how great that feels getting out the shower versus the soggy wet tea towel that you got as an alternative. Absolutely. Both will get the job done. I'm just saying for 20 quid, I've got my 350 quid. You can't stop me. I've got my 350 quid budget and I'm going to spend it on 19 pounds on this, on this improved tamper. Okay. Absolutely fine. Uh, I, I'm with you on that one, but it's, it's not, it's unnecessary already. But did I share the screen and show this? I think I did not. Let me go and show the one I'm, I'm talking about. So you can take a look at this. That's actually very that. similar to the. Do you see that, that little piece of plastic that's yeah, in there? Yeah, but it's there. metal at the bottom. Hmm? It's metal at the bottom. I don't know if it is metal. Yeah, it is metal. Well, I know it's sort of metal. It's one of those metals that you just it's think. It's metal and it's metal at the top because it's a oh. magnet that holds it in. There we go. So that's that looks the... very similar to it. No, it, it, it's not. I've used these runners before. Um, this is not the heaviest tamper you can get. It, of course, it's not the best tamper you can get for 90 No, I mean, they, they are okay, obviously, you, you, but you don't necessarily need it. That's it's a big step up. I'm just saying as part of your overall experience to make this a pleasant experience and get you, and get you hooked. Yeah, true. I've got the money to spend. That's what I'm going to do with it. Now, it, you could be, it could be, Max, that if you spend a bit more than 250 quid because you can't find one like that. Now, I'm also hoping this guy says 250 I'm going to get down there. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to be like, oh, it's a bit, uh, yeah, 250 is going to be a bit of a stretch with this machine. I, I would get him down at least another, you know, 15 or 20 quid off. At least, and yeah. At least, right? So you're really talking, and I'm going at, at the price he's put there, 250. I'm, I'd be hoping to get it for 230 or 225 or something like that. I'll bring it out and say cash because that makes absolutely no difference whatsoever, but people like the sound of it. I'd rustle it in front of his face. Like... Mm -hmm. no. I'll, uh, uh, one, one thing that I just remembered that uh, it, came, it came natural to me, but then uh, I just remembered it. If you buy a, a gadget, mm -hmm. you open yourself to a lot of potential next, machines without having to change all of your gear mm -hmm. namely the tamper and the because level. you got the 58 mil now i'm yes now i am very aware of that i think you've just 
picked on the Achilles heel in my strategy, which I was hoping you'd miss. <laughs> it didn't. is true. You're locked in. Although, although Max, do you remember mm. that machine that we really liked and we, including you, really mm. liked when we were reviewing machines and that had a 54 mil uh, doohickey? The, the, you know, Valdi. the one. The Vivaldi. Is it 54? It was 50, whatever. It wasn't the I think it was like something strange, like 52 or something. No, no, no. It was either 53 or 54. And it's probably the same as, uh, as the Sage. I think it was the same as the Sage. Mm. And so it could be that you upgrade to that. And that actually is a wonderful upgrade oh, path. Yeah, that would be amazing. Seriously good upgrade path, right? Yeah. So not a whole a lot of money either. You can find them secondhand if you remember what it is that we actually said, which was the what, Max? <laughs> it's the Vivaldi. Uh, the, um... the Vivaldi, too. There's a few of them, aren't there? Yeah. Who makes it? What's the machine name company? Yes, I'm the, trying to remember. The model number is Vivaldi, but who makes it, Max? La Spaziale. La Spaziale. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I that was actually, that. it was killing me there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that so you actually have machine. got an upgrade pass. So my Achilles heel is is slightly less of an Achilles heel. Slightly, but it's still... They it's are still, you're much more limited, right? Absolutely, I do accept that. I do accept that. Um, so now you, you've got your... You've only spent, you know, 200 spondulis maybe. Um, yeah. What are you going to do with the, with the rest of your money? Uh, well, for example... I I would I would stick to a ganja, and I'm actually I was looking at them, and I, mm. and I would actually probably if I want a new machine, I would probably get one of the ones that doesn't have the the three way valve because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make your coffee better to have a three way valve. Sucks the water out the out the puck. Makes your puck this easier to empty. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't. I it, don't like a soggy puck. I use a paintbrush to get my uh, my coffee ground after I knock it out to get the, the remaining coffee. I mean, if it's soggy, I rinse my paintbrush it under, gets, gets... I rinse it under dirty. the sink, under the water. I just give it a bit of a rinse and then... Yeah, but my coffee machine is two steps from my sink. And what happens is you wash it out under the sink. As you walk those two steps back, you drip it all over the floor. You're plumbed in, right? Uh, that's another You can actually use... Uh, you plumbed can... in yet. Yeah, okay. Well, once you've plumbed in, you can actually use this, the hot water spout for what it's designed for. Ah, anyway, where are digressing? I don't actually switch that boiler on, so I wouldn't be able to. Ah. We're digressing. Yeah. Does it come from that boiler or does it come from the other? Uh, it comes from the, from coffee the steam boiler. boiler, I'm pretty sure. That's silly. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, the coffee machine, we have it. So I would actually go probably for... Um, if you can't find the paros because they are actually very rare, that there's not many around, and the few that are around, the, the people don't sell them because they are actually very good machines. Um, if you can't find the paros, you can get a Gaja Classic, and you can normally find them for a hundred ish, a hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, I'm pretty bad shape. One hundred and twenty pounds. You're going to spend two hundred, two hundred plus. For decent, That's the for issue. Decent Sometimes machine. you find them. It depends, really. It depends. There was a period where you could find them. I mean, people would throw them at your back. Yeah, um, yeah, there was. It yeah. was like a couple of years ago. Then before we started talking good about them, it's our. Yeah, food. we pushed. It's either us or the pandemic pushed the prices up. I'm not sure which it was. Yeah. And I mean, you, you would find Ganja Classics. Yeah, I have a hundred pounds. Oh yeah, here ha have three of them. Yeah, and then you can actually pay someone 50, 50 pounds to descale it and clean it and tune it for you. Mm -hmm. And I can, I know at least one person that would do that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so you get one of those, or you get you can get a new one, um, but not a Gadget Classic because that's like four hundred pounds and mad. Uh, you can get a Gadget Evolution or. Um, um, a gadget espresso, one of the ones that don't have the fancy three-way valve. It's absolutely fine. It will have a pressurized porta filter. It will have the same boiler as the Gadget Classic. It will make the same kind of steam as the Gadget Classic. So in theory, you can you can make a very nice cappuccino. You can make very nice latte art if you really want to. You can learn that. You can learn to make good tasting coffee. And you can also eventually, you can also modify that to add a, an overpressure valve and you can put, put it at nine bar and that will take you all the way 
to professional tasting coffee. And then you can decide, okay, I, I like this, this game and you upgrade into a big coffee machine. Uh, so we have those. Let's say we spent about 200 pounds on it. We have uh, 150 pounds left. Mm -hmm. With 150 pounds left, I would try to spend 100 pounds on the grinder. Right. If you don't have a grinder. Because you can probably find an old uh, Ranchilio Rocky She's a capable grinder. It can do good coffee, the good grind. You can try to find um, a Gaja MDF, which is also a very capable grinder that I used to have. Uh, that's a flat bird grinder. You can find those for 100 to 150 pounds. And the tamper. And that's all you need really to start. And you can, so you can actually get started, but I would actually compromise in the in what you get and that gives you more or less a feel for what you can do quite a lot with that right yeah you can, you can quite learn a lot. You, you, you can, can do quite learn. a lot with it well so so basically just to sum up your your package you would go for one of the gadgets the paris if you can find it or one of the other gadgets that, that that comes with a um without the three-way solenoids and when we're talking about a three-way solenoid that may be foreign language to some people, but just go and take a look on the features and you'll see that a lot of, you know, if a machine has it, they'll really tout it like it's a big deal. All a three-way solenoid does, it's just like it, 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 it sucks. Basically, it's a valve that when the pressure is created inside the basket, when, when the, the water has been pushed through the coffee, at the end of it, there's a valve and it opens up and all that pressure is released, which basically sucks the water out and away leaving you with a dry puck that you can easily, you know, knock out into a knock box. Um, and, uh, and as Max says, you, you, you don't need that. I personally like having a dry puck, but you're absolutely right in that that's a sort of a, that's a sacrifice that you can actually easily discard uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and make if you're going to get a better overall package. So that's what you'd go for. Then you'd go and put the rest of the money into a separate grinder and uh, and probably put most of the money there um and you'd work with that i think that's a pretty i think that's a it's a very intellectual approach to it i've got a slightly yeah. i've got a slightly more mainstream approach which uh i'm going to go share my screen again and, and and talk about some of the other things that i would get so my my package is stuff that you can definitely get like you could go searching for all this stuff today tonight tomorrow and you'd find it like almost for sure even the sage barista express the reason I picked that particular model is because it has, it's the no frills version and there's a lot of them around. There's a lot of them around. You're bound to find one. And if you don't find one at that price point in the condition that you like, wait a couple of days and you'll find another one on the market. So the next thing I was going to pick out was actually, um, I would go for a coffee distributor. So you can get these in 53 mils as well. I'd actually put this in as a higher priority over the camper even. I, I think, what you can do with these distribution tools is you can spin the top uh, up and down and lock mm -hmm. them into place so that that metal part protruding at the bottom is deeper. And that means you can kind of tamp a little bit. You can get it, you can push down. So you're not just skimming the top of the coffee, but you're compressing the coffee a little bit and then distributing it. And doing that, um, if you see, there's been a number of videos made by some, uh, some very respected sort of coffee roasters and that lot who are running tests showing that the distribution is way more important to um, the extraction than tamping. So I'd actually get this first. It's a tenner, for God's sakes, it's 10 pounds. So I've now spent 250 or less, if I can haggle the guy on the machine, I've spent... Uh, 19 pounds and 99p on the tamper. And I've now spent another tenner on the coffee distribution tool. And I've got Prime, so I get free delivery. So I've added up, what's that, 280 odd quid? Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. 280, yeah, about 280 pounds. So what would I spend the rest on? Well, interestingly, um, I would actually go for a second grinder. And the reason I'd go for a second grinder is for two things. First of all, I think those Sage grinders, the grinders that come with the Sage machine, 
are actually mm -hmm. decent, especially if you set them up right. They're yeah. they're not going to set the world on fire, but they're but they're decent. Um, but you can do you can be so much more flexible with a hand grinder. You're not going to necessarily want to adjust that um, the beans in that hopper. Like once you've got the beans in the hopper, like the way I think the way you'll find it. I know this can technically work a different way, but the, if you end up doing what I'm doing, which you will do mm -hmm. because it's like it's the laziest, least kind of effort route, is you throw beans into the hopper. You're not going to do single shots with that hopper. Are you not going to do a? Um, you're not going to put just enough beans into that hopper to do one shot. Because the way that those grinders work is they need to have a certain amount of beans in them to push them through and to get the gravity and so forth. Yeah. So what I tend to do is I tend to have um, it set up and, and dialed in for a particular coffee in that hopper. And then I have a separate hand grinder, which I play with. That's my that's what the one that I, I'll play with different um, different grind sizes and, and, and different extractions. I've also got different baskets. So I'll try different baskets, different amounts, different quantities, different grind sizes. And I'll do that all with a hand grinder. So I've got the ultimate flexibility of not messing up the grind settings on my hopper so that when your partner or son or whoever comes down and wants to make a coffee that they're angry because you've been playing with the grind settings and now you can't remember how to set it back again. Um, and you've got a separate hand grinder that you can, that you can be creative with. This hand grinder is 59 pounds. It's not, again, in terms of quality of materials, it's not the best, but it's, I mean, the results that you'll get with it are pretty damn decent. And all the, all the reports I've heard back from people that I know who own one are very happy with it. Um, so I would pair these two together. It also means that if you do get rid of the uh, Sage Barista Express or Breville um, in the future, that you can keep that hand grinder and the hand grinder comes in useful if you're traveling or if you want to make uh, pour overs or get into other types of coffees. So that would be the, the next thing I do. That adds 60 pounds. So I've got the Sage Barista Express. I've got the coffee distributor. That's 250 plus 10. That's 260. I've got the Tampa plus another 20. That's 280. I add this in there. I'm at 340. Right? Mm -hmm. I think I'm actually at 380. Eight, sorry, three hundred and thirty-eight because I couple it off there. But I'm okay. Who's counting exactly? Um, if I was going to stretch just a little bit more, just an extra five quid. If I could squeeze, if I can knock that guy down by five pounds, I would then also get some of these um, third wave water because uh, I think it would be again fascinating to those who are getting into coffee to be making some coffee. And then to use some third wave water, which basically, um, in, instead of buying a peak water filter, you're using these tablets inside your uh, inside your water tank, and um, and that will set the water up to be uh, optimal or reasonably optimal for extracting coffee. And I'd I'd like you to try without these. And then without changing anything else to try with these in the water and see what a difference it makes, because it's quite noticeable. Mm. And that would be my setup for 350 quid. I think that's a pretty decent setup. Mm. Yeah, I was actually looking for, um, uh, for Gadget Evolution because they don't make it anymore. So I found one on eBay starting bid it's 50 pounds. And I found also another one still on eBay where the starting bid is 35 pounds. So oh that's my pretty God. good. You can probably get them for about 100 ish, 120. And those are very good machines. They're like the gadgets, the normal gadget. And uh, accidentally, I stumbled upon a gadget XD, which is a dual, uh, a dual group head uh, for 120. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't think you need the dual group head. Don't get people into, you know. <laughs> well, it needs to be refurbished. <laughs> I am looking at you. Know anyone that does that, Max? Huh? Do you know anyone that does that refurbishment? I don't know. I, I know a guy. I know a guy. Mm. All right. So that's what like, we would do. Yeah. I'd be interested to know. I mean, what others would do. I mean, I this is you know how everyone says this because they want you to comment really below and and it pushes their YouTube stats up. But I actually genuinely. Would be yeah. really interested if you had three hundred and fifty pounds. If you've got three hundred and fifty pounds and you're in America, 
you're obviously screwed because that's not legal tender. No, exactly. Um, but if you've got 350 pounds in the UK or you've got $500 in America or, you know, wherever you're at, if you're in Poland, you'd have Lex. Is it Lex? Or... No um, idea. Uh, so, you know, whatever it is in your local currency, I'd be interested to know what you would buy um, because I just found this a fascinating, I found this a fascinating exercise. What's available? A lot of machines have gone up in price over the, over the course of the pandemic. Things that were yeah. cheap are now less cheap. Um, so it's become a bit of a, it's become a bit of a, um, a bit of a rip off. And a rip off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, would you be able to get anything new? Would you, would you try to get anything new? Is it worth it? Yeah. I'd be interested to know if there is a new thing that I'm going to talk about espresso now. So nobody comes in and goes, I can get a Kalita wave or something like that. That's not the same. Well, yeah. Thing. I mean, I could get a mock, get a mock for 20 pounds. I'll get my AeroPress and I can make espresso with that. And it's no, no, you can't. So it's not uh, espresso, it's AeroPresso. It's AeroPresso. Uh, so yeah, do that. Uh, next week, keep an eye out on bartalks.net because we are releasing. Um, that interview with Massimiliano Pogliani, the Ooh. CEO, the CEO of, uh, of Ely Coffee, uh, talking about their journey to um, something called B Core certification, which you're going to hear more and more about as everyone talks about ESG. But basically, it's their commitment to, to, to being an ethical company and, and sort of what they had to do to go through to, uh, to do that in a very transparent way, you know, the way they have to report it and what it means and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's also just to me, it's just interesting to talk to the CEO of a big company like that. And, and you know, um, I asked him the question. Here's a, here's a thing. He was Oracle World. Do you know Oracle, the, the software company? Mm -hmm. so he was at Oracle World a few years ago, and, uh, and they had an Illy Coffee stand there. And, uh, and he was waiting in line. And I, I wanted to, did you really wait in line, Max? Or did he go to the front? He's like, no, no, I waited in line. I waited in line. I was like, okay. Did Larry Ellison wait in line or did he go? And he avoided that question, I think. So, mm. You know, Larry Ellison's the CEO of Oracle. And if you haven't, if you don't know who Larry Ellison is, he's got a reputation for being a bit of an egomaniac, a bit of a psychopath. There was a book written about him called The Difference Between God and Larry Ellison. And then in subtitle, it's God doesn't think he's Larry Ellison. Um, <laughs> Why give an insight into this guy? Wow. But I asked him, I said, did Larry, did Larry, did Larry jump the queue? I don't think he answered. Anyway, let's wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a really good, it was a very intellectually stimulating session, Max. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you for, no uh, thank you for putting a shirt on for the podcast. That's, that's much appreciated. And uh, I will see you next week, sir. We're going to talk about coffee next week. Maybe one, next week, let's talk about some of the coffee we're drinking, because I've been drinking some great coffees. Uh, yeah, me too. I think. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> being a coffee podcast, we should do that for once, uh, once in a while. Yeah, I think we should probably do it every now and then. <laughs> All right, my friend. You take care. Bye. See you.